My name is Rachel and I work for my mom's dermatology office. Today is going to be an admin heavy day and I'm excited to show you some of the things that I do behind the scenes. I try to make my husband's lunch on most days and today we're doing some buffalo chicken breast and provolone cheese wrap ups with a pickle and on the side we also have a keto yogurt and some granola bars. And now it's time to get ready for the day. Good morning guys, happy Tuesday and welcome to this work day in my life. I had a terrible morning. First of all, I woke up in a terrible mood for some reason and then I wake up and I step on a cockroach, like a dead cockroach, thank God it was already dead. And then I make my coffee, everything is going well and then Vinny throws up, so I clean that up. Vinny is my cat, in case you're new here. And oh my gosh, I'm just trying so hard to not let that like bad mood continue throughout the day. So let's partner together, keep each other accountable. Let's have a great day regardless of how the morning went. And I'm just wearing my fig bottoms. These are the jogger bottoms and then this black shirt from Amazon. I'll link this down below. I just feel cuter in tight shirts as opposed to scrubs and today is not a surgery day so I don't have to worry about like blood splatters or things like that. So today I'm I'm wearing my Amazon shirt. Okay, so this is not technically too messy, but I'm going to straighten up the couch and wipe down the countertops. I don't know, this is like my pet peeve. When you go eye level and you can see crumbs on the counter and I'm gonna put some dishes away right here. I feel like not cleaning up last night definitely contributed to me waking up in a sour mood, but I'm going to tidy up before work. That way when I come home from work, it's nice and clean and hopefully I can have a better evening than I had a morning. Okay, so for dinner tonight, I'm gonna defrost some salmon. We also have some pork chops that I need to make. And this isn't enough salmon for the both of us because AJ eats a lot. So I'm gonna make pork chops and salmon tonight because why not? There are no rules in life. Comment down below if you prefer to do your cleaning routine before you go to bed or if you like to do it first thing in the morning. I kind of go 50-50. If I don't do it at night, I'll do it in the morning, but I do love waking up to a clean space. It's time to go to work now and I usually listen to worship music or just sit in silence in the morning and kind of clear my head and have prayer time, meditation, and just get my mind mentally ready for the day. I do have a pretty hybrid position of assisting with patients but also doing the bookkeeping and the financials for the practice. And today is a very admin heavy day so I'm starting out by checking my emails and paying bills. I usually try to pay all the bills once a week, that way I just have one admin day where I focus on getting things done. After I print the check, I staple one of the stubs to the bill and I file it away in my accounts payable folder. And it's usually around 9.30 or 10 that I start to get hungry and eat my breakfast. What is it? It's like a little abscess. So my piercing has been infected for months now and my mom is a dermatologist, so she's taking a look at it again. And we need to use this uh, silver nitrate sticks to burn off your granuloma. <laughs> this is called proud flesh or pyogenic granuloma that forms in areas of trauma as a reaction to foreign body. Okay, you may have to take it out. Your body doesn't like it. It's been how long? Three months. Two months. Your body's not accepting it. We can also give it a little cantaloupe injection. Let's do that now. Oh gosh. Yes. Hold Why? On. Oh, sorry. Sorry. The steroid usually settles down the exuberant reaction that the body has to a foreign body. You said 50 patients a week. I would say that we can take, yeah, that sounds about right. 50 to 60, I would say. New patients. New patients. Okay. So at a basic level of doc doc, we are a website in local office which connects patients to providers, as well as any insurances that you're credentialed with. It is lunchtime. I have a little bit of a headache. Oh, I need to get gas. I'm at Poe Tropical, of course. So hungry. Hi, how may I help you? Hi, can I have a small choppy chop with brown rice, black beans, chicken, and corn? Okay. And cilantro sauce, please. Anything else? That's it. 
801. You guys, Pollo Tropical is still hands down the most affordable, healthy-ish lunch that you can buy. Like brown rice, black beans, chicken, and corn. $8 and it fills you up and it's so good. So freaking good. Technically, corn is not great for you but it's fine. We need a little bit of spice in our life. Okay, I actually came home for lunch, which is very rare for me, but I have my coworker's shoes, which is really random, long story, but I have to give those back to her. I forgot to take them this morning, so I never come home for lunch, but it reminds me of the days when our cat used to be a teeny tiny little baby and I would come home every single day to play with her. Speaking of which, where the heck are you? Oh, of course, you're right there. That's her favorite spot. No, I don't make my bed. I'm also gonna take two Tylenols because I have the worst headache. I don't know what it is, you guys. Today is just not my day. But it'd be like that sometimes. I just demolished that. I'm feeling good, feeling energized again. So I also wanted to come home so I could have time to talk to you guys on my lunch break today. I wanted to talk about how to get your foot in the door as a medical assistant or a medical receptionist if you don't have any experience. Cause I get so many questions from you guys and they're honestly great questions because it can be so overwhelming and intimidating to try to get a job in the medical field when you feel like you have no experience, but that may not be true. If you didn't know, Indeed has a whole YouTube channel dedicated to mock interviews and career tips and I highly recommend you guys check it out and they are partnering with me to bring you guys these resources but there was this one video that I was watching about how to get into entry-level positions with no experience and I really liked the way this person responded to the question of what makes you qualified for this position or basically why should we trust you with this position take a look at what he says well first of all I am committed to working at a mission driven organization like this one I'm passionate about marketing. My undergrad coursework focused on understanding digital culture and the importance of representation in advertising. And I'm eager to apply what I've learned to a professional setting. Also, your company values really resonate with me. They make you stand out from some of the other organizations I was considering. I was listening to a recent speech the CEO gave and when she was talking about how we need to innovate faster and disrupt our own industry before others disrupt us, I thought to myself, this is a place I would be lucky to contribute to. So as you can see, you don't necessarily have to have actual work experience in the field as long as you can pull things from your resume. So if you're a new graduate, for example, and you majored in something science related, pull information from a class and say, you know what, in my biology class, I learned that XYZ is so important and, and now I can use that knowledge to apply it to this role where I feel confident that I will quickly pick up what I need to know and apply my previous knowledge. So basically you can pull on classes that you've taken, you can pull on shadowing experience. Even if you've only shadowed, let's say one doctor or one nurse, you can say that you have shadowing experience and you learned the importance of this and the importance of that and you're excited to translate that into this position. So employers know that a lot of people are gonna come into these positions, specifically MA and medical receptionists with little to no experience. So don't feel insecure about that. Instead, be confident and think of those things ahead of time that you can talk about that will show them that even though you don't have work experience, you do have knowledge and you're excited for the position. I'll link the full Indeed video down below if you want to watch the whole video because they give good examples of what not to say in an interview which I always find super helpful to see like what you should say versus what you shouldn't say so definitely check out their channel down below even if you're feeling confident in your interview it's always good to brush up on your skills and think of these questions that may trip you up so whether that's reviewing with a friend or having your mom ask you these questions or just checking out Indeed's channel and watching them while you're doing the dishes or something I feel like you'll be so much more confident going into your interview Okay, I just had to go outside and tell the lawn people because they pulled up in their truck that I don't want my grass cut today. If you've been watching, you know I have issues with lawn people. This is a new company and I really like their service, but sometimes they come once a week and you don't need to cut the grass that often. So I just told them, don't cut it today. But like, thank goodness I was home. Otherwise they would have cut it and I would have owed them $40. Okay, another tip that I have, which is unrelated to interviewing necessarily, is walk in there, ask to speak to the manager or whoever is available, give them your resume, send a follow-up email and say, I love 
love your practice. I've heard such great things. My friend comes here to see the doctor. I love you guys. I really want to work here. And I know that sounds a little bit aggressive and intimidating, but we've hired someone because they did that and they followed up five times and she didn't have any experience at all in the field. She was a new grad and we decided to take a chance on her. So I know that's not going to work for all industries. For example, if you walk into a Target or a Walmart or one of these big chain stores, look at you. What are you doing? and you ask to be hired, that may not work. But I know from experience from our office and other doctor's offices that if you walk in there and you pursue it, you have a high chance of them considering you because doctor's offices are always looking for receptionists, MAs, nurses, techs. I know, right Vinny? Like why would they think that it's okay to just cut the grass today? All right, it is 12.43, I need to get back to work. Another perk of coming home for lunch is that I get to brush my teeth because sometimes that garlic sauce can stay on you for a while. And I used to brush my teeth at work when I had Invisalign, like after lunch, but I stopped doing that and maybe I should start again. Especially if you're interacting with patients, you don't wanna like give them garlic breath. There's a tip for ya. Comment down below if you ever go home for lunch because sometimes it's worth it but most of the time it's not by the time you drive here get your food or eat whatever and then drive it back it's usually not worth it but let me know if any of you guys do that so this afternoon i'm unboxing a new microphone that we're gonna use for our social media posts and it's a little bit complicated so i honestly couldn't figure out how to use it so i decided to stop for a coffee break i don't do this every day and sometimes i'll even do a decaf as just a little pick me up to get me through the afternoon i ended up watching a youtube video on it and i feel a little bit more confident that i'll be able to figure it out the next thing on my agenda is to label all of the new custom prescriptions that we just received. A lot of derm practices are now holding in stock a lot of the common prescriptions so that patients don't have to go to the pharmacy and pick them up. It's really easy for the patient to just come in, get a prescription, pay for it, and leave as opposed to coming in to see the doctor and then driving over to the pharmacy, waiting in line, making sure they have it ready, fighting with them about the insurance, and I think this is a really cool idea. So I labeled like 500 million bottles and then I organized them aesthetically and it was actually kind of fun. All right guys, it is 4.31, we're wrapping up the work day. I spent literally three hours doing those labels and then putting them and organizing them. And I'm glad that's done because it was like a one-time thing. I'll have to do it every time we get a new shipment, but this is gonna be like the largest shipment that we ever get, so it's okay. But tomorrow we have a big surgery day. We have, I think like nine surgeries in the morning. I'm gonna clean off my desk and get ready for tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be a hands-on medical assistant day. So if you wanna see a full day in the life of a medical assistant, watch this video that I have on my channel. I'll link it down below um, because I do have a hybrid position. So someday Days I'm doing more MA work and then other days like today is just like admin and unboxing things and paying bills and stuff like that So I really like it because I get to do different things on different days and I'm not just like doing the same thing every day So that's really cool. And if you want to see a medical receptionist video watch this one I'll have it linked too because when I started working here I was the receptionist I feel like I got a good sense of what each role does and it's very interesting to Like see how different those videos are. All right guys just got home pulled into the garage i'm feeling good i can't lie i think the copy the copy i think the coffee really helped to boost my spirits and have like a productive afternoon and sometimes i just like doing that mundane work of putting labels on something like sometimes that's just what you need i was listening to a podcast and it was a good time so yeah i'm home let's see what kind of exercise we're gonna get into today and we're also gonna make dinner and it's gonna be a good night what are you looking at Okay guys, we are going to the gym today. We're gonna do some shoulders. And Vinny is basking in the sun. Hey, how you doing? Ow, ouch, leave me alone. But really exciting news. My pillowcase from Amazon came in. I'm still waiting on the ones for these pillows, but for this big one, I got a replacement. So I just got like a striped cream color and let's see if it fits. Wow, it is perfect. I really, really like it. And I'm glad that it's high quality because sometimes with Amazon, you never know. But this is really soft, perfect size, and it's much better than this dingy one that we had. So now I'm just waiting for my new checkered ones that are also from Amazon. They should be here tomorrow. We 
are home from the gym. Just got the mail. Oh no. A bill? Another one, thank you. All right, this is interesting. Another insurance thing, I have to look into that. Really? I have to pay $95 to Quest for another test. This is in addition to the other fertility bills that I talked about in my other video. I hate this. Another bill for $50. For more lab work so yeah overall not a good not a good mail haul but i'm starving so before i make dinner i'm gonna have a banana with some peanut butter i knew this was gonna happen i knew that testing my fertility would be expensive but it still sucks when you get the bill you know what i mean you know what i mean Brittany? all right i decided i'm just gonna make the salmon tonight and it'll just be <laughs> it is what it is if it's not enough it's not enough but i'm also making some brown rice and if you don't use a rice cooker what the heck are you doing it's so easy i have one cup of brown rice two cups of water and a chunk of butter and it's just so much easier than using a pot i just showered by the way these brussels sprouts are expired but i feel like it's fine they look perfectly fine I also like to cut them a little bit smaller. Oh no, these look weird. Yeah, this looks not good. I'm gonna I'm gonna make these broccolis instead, even though these are also expired. Mm. It's fine. These are fine. The best roasted broccoli you're ever going to have is just salt, garlic powder, and not smoked paprika and olive oil, and these are so good. The key is you have to break them up pretty small. Like you see these little small sections here, that's what gets them really crispy. If you leave them too big of chunks, they won't get crispy and you won't like them as much. And I roast it on 400 or 450 for like 10, 15 minutes. Mwah, amazing. And then for the salmon, mine is really simple, salt and pepper with some butter. And then AJ really likes this lemon butter dill sauce. So I made him a little boat here because I hate dill, fun fact. So I just put a bunch of that over his and that is my favorite. Oh, that's hot. My favorite easy dinner. You guys, AJ's upset about the pillow. He replaced, she replaced the cover. Yeah, he was obsessed with the other cover, which is why it took me so long to replace it, but that's just, it's just so gross. I, th I threw it away. That, I'm waiting for another one from Amazon. It should come tomorrow. Uh. <laughs> okay, guys, I am done with dinner. I'm eating one of my Atkins uh, peanut butter cups. I'm doing low carb, that's why. In case anyone's like, what is this crazy girl eating Atkins for? <laughs> I'm also gonna answer some emails on my laptop and watch a show. AJ's still finishing his broccoli. He always saves it for last. We just finished watching Survivor, the last season that was just put on Netflix. So yeah, we're waiting for Succession to come out this week and we're gonna finish The Last of Us, but that is the plan for tonight. It's eight o'clock. Good morning, guys. It is Wednesday. I'm about to go to work. Fell asleep shortly after turning on the TV last night, but we started watching this show called Outlast, which is very similar to Survivor. It's just like a little bit different. So check it out on Netflix if you love shows like that. But I also just quickly wanted to say that not every work day do I come home and go to the gym and cook dinner and check emails while watching TV. That was like a very productive day for me. And even though we started off the day in a terrible mood, I'm very grateful that I was able to turn that around with the grace of God and just like, end up having a good day but if you are someone like me who struggled for the longest time to do anything after work because you're just so tired or in a bad mood or just like don't feel like doing anything i am right with you on that <laughs> and i would just encourage you to start by doing one meaningful thing every single day if you guys have been watching you're like rachel we know we'll do one thing but let me challenge you if you're someone who can now successfully do one meaningful task after work let's say that's going on a walk doing some stretches reading a book, cooking a dinner, going to the gym, whatever that meaningful task is for you. It could even be doing a load of laundry. Start with one thing. And if, you were, if you've already mastered the one thing, I'm gonna challenge you to start doing two things on days where you can. So like yesterday for me, I went to the gym and I cooked dinner and that doesn't happen every day, but it's nice to push myself to do one extra thing that I know is gonna benefit me and result in me having a meaningful day. Because I know in today's culture with 
work and everything, it can feel like all we do is work and come home and sleep and do it again. But by doing something meaningful after work every single day, we bring the life back into life. That's my word of encouragement for you today. I hope you enjoyed this work day and I will see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram or else. Bye. Strings of violin.